Hello learners, today we will be discussing about greenhouse gases emissions. We know that human actions and activities, particularly the economic activities, since industrial revolution has caused a lot of harm to the environment, particularly the atmospheric environment wherein you can see for years ourselves that the greenhouse gases concentration in the atmosphere has increased tremendously since the industrial revolution and this increase in greenhouse gas emission has caused an increase in the surface air temperature to the tune of one degree centigrade it is a huge amount one degree centigrade increase in surface air, air temperature because that is having a lot of drastic impact on every aspect of the climate system and when you see if this global warming if it continues if you are not taking any steps for mitigation then it may lead to catastrophe uh, in fact the temperature increase can uh, go up to 1.5 degrees centigrade even between 2030 and 2052 so it's definitely a cause of concern and in this regard if you see the main aspect main reason for increasing uh, carbon dioxide concentration or for that matter any greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is because of human action because of the anthropogenic activities and related uh, phenomena like urbanization and changing land use pattern and uh, so on and so forth when uh, today's session we'll be talking about the greenhouse gases emission how, the trend of it what is the reason for uh, the increase in uh, greenhouse gas co concentration and so on and so forth so when you look at the concentration the trend of uh, greenhouse gases concentration before industrial revolution the concentration of uh, greenhouse gases particularly the carbon dioxide nitrous oxide methane it was very very less and that is the reason why there was a stable environment all along nevertheless since industrial revolution uh, you know the gases concentration particularly the greenhouse gases concentration has increased and when you talk about the greenhouse gases concentration i mean it is they, these are the radiatively active gases and uh, our environment is livable human existence is possible because of these greenhouse gases it is having a positive impact as well when it's a positive impact these radiatively active gases as the capacity to absorb uh, the radiation uh, if the wavelength is more than a four micrometer it is having the capability to absorb the long wave radiation and because of this reason a famous effect called greenhouse effect is possible and because of the greenhouse effect uh, you know it has contributed to an um, uh, what you call a 34 degrees centigrade increase in temperatures because of greenhouse gases and that effect is called as greenhouse effect and because of the greenhouse effect only the human beings can exist in other words the earth environment is livable because the average um, surface air temperature of earth is 15 degrees centigrade and this 15 degrees centigrade is because of greenhouse effect nevertheless the concentration is increasing and that is causing a lot of uh, uh, impacts on the different components of the climate system and when you look at the concentration of greenhouse gases particularly the carbon dioxide concentration before the industrial revolution the concentration was almost stable it was hovering around to 80 parts per million but now the concentration is uh, you know drastically increased and it is going to touch and it is going to cross even 410 parts per million so the concentration you can see for yourself that concentration of 40 percentage increase since the industrial revolution and that increase is uh, uh, tremendous uh, when I say it's tremendous, it's basically because of the human action. Human action because many of the activities, uh, whether it is uh, the use of fossil fuels, energy use, or industrial activity, it everything is because that lead to increasing the carbon dioxide concentration. So the second important gas is that uh, methane. When you talk about a methane, again the concentration of methane. It is increased, you know, 150 per percentage it has increased, uh, the methane concentration. And when you look at the concentration of methane before industrial revolution is very meager, it was around, around 700 parts per billion and now it has crossed so much. No, uh, so that is uh, in fact, and, and again when you talk about a methane gas, may, uh, you know, uh, its main action is because of the land use changes. We will see one by one what are the reasons for it later. But when you look at the trend, the 150 percentage increase in the 
concentration of methane and uh, that is again a cause of concern because the global warming potential of methane is around 24 times more than the carbon dioxide. So the next important gas as far as the trend is concerned, um, the nitrous oxide again is a very important gas. The concentration of nitrous oxide has increased uh, since industrial revolution uh, about around 20 percentage. So this nitrous oxide is again an important gas when you look at the global warming potential. So and uh, so these three are important gases. Let us see one by one the what you call how it is uh, the causes of uh, what you call uh, the source of emission and thereafter we will look at the mitigation aspect as well. Now we have seen the uh, trend of uh, greenhouse gases concentration since industrial revolution particularly we have seen the trend of uh, carbon dioxide, uh, nitrous oxide and methane and now we will see one by one uh, the gases, the concentration, the source of emission and the ways to reduce the emission or mitigate the emission. When you look at the holistic level, at the holistic level, uh, the important activities, economic activities are responsible for increasing uh, the greenhouse gases emission into the atmosphere are uh, basically the energy sector, industrial sector, agriculture, unrelated sectors, uh, building sector, cement production. These are the normal economic activities that are responsible for uh, causing, you know, a lot of emissions, greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. The foremost important sector is the energy sector, which is almost responsible for, you know, you know, it causes around 35 percentage increase in the greenhouse gases concentration is because of the energy sector. The next important sector is the agriculture, uh, forestry and other land use sector. This sector alone contributes around 24 percentage of greenhouse gases emission into the atmosphere. And next comes your um, you know industrial sector and thereafter the, the transport and building sector. So the purpose of uh, stating the sectors, uh, the purpose of stating the economic activity responsible for increasing greenhouse gases emissions into the atmosphere are we can focus on the mitigation strategies. We can focus on these sectors to implement certain strategies so that the greenhouse gases emissions can be reduced. And that is indeed the purpose of all the international agreements on climate change and it should be a very much part of any climate policy of any government for that matter. So these are the sectors. Now let us look at the gases. The four most important gases is the carbon dioxide. When you look at the carbon dioxide gas, uh, the precise measurement of carbon dioxide uh, gas, I mean uh, the emissions, the atmospheric concentration, you know, the measurement started way back in 1957 in South Pole and the consecutive uh, in 1958 in Mauna Loa, the concentration, the what you call the uh, instrumental measurement of carbon dioxide started in 1958. Then the concentration of carbon dioxide was very, very less. And you know, when you look at the per annum increase, you know, it is very, very less. It's one, one parts per million per year. That is an annual increase. But thereafter, if you look at it because of the population pressure, you know, uh, we are now touching 7.2 billion and by 2050, the population, the uh, human population will cross 10 billion. So the uh, population pressure and economic activity, industrial activity, urbanization, this is all have contributed to increase in the carbon dioxide concentration. That is the reason why if you look at it now, the present day it is in 4, 4 and 10 parts per million. So slowly and steadily the concentration of uh, the carbon dioxide is increasing. Now per annum, if you look at it, the increase, the per annum increase of carbon dioxide is around 2 parts per million. So it is definitely a cause of concern because we need to take a lot of measures because every year the concentration is increasing by at the rate of two parts per million. So definitely we need to take the measures possible because we need to look, look at the sectors responsible for emitting the carbon dioxide. And also we need to look at the measures, possible measures to have more of sink capacity. Yeah, how to, you know, sequester the carbon uh, from the atmosphere. That is the important thing we need to take uh, into account.
the, the another important uh, thing when you look at the carbon cycle uh, the carbon emission and uh, the the uh, definitely the global level cycle if you look at it uh, the uh, at the in the atmosphere whatever the emissions it is a carbon dioxide emission it it stays in the atmosphere and half of the percentage whatever we are emitting it stays in the atmosphere so remaining half it is uh, yes, sequestered whether it is in the vegetation or in the form of biomass or in the oceans, it's a ocean is a huge body, you know, huge body. It also sequesters the carbon dioxide in the form of carbonates, bicarbonates. And when you look at the concentration, uh, the concentration level, atmosphere is having around 800 gigatons of carbon. Uh, as far as the vegetation is concerned, which is sequestering the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it is having around 610 uh, gigatons of carbon. And ocean, I said, it is a huge um, body, you know, a huge body. It is uh, having a lot of carbon dioxide in the form of carbonate and bicarbonate and it is around 39,000 gigatons of carbon is there in the ocean. When you look at the uh, reasons, the causes of uh, or in other words the sources of emission carbon dioxide, the major sources is uh, use of for fossil fuels, the combustion activity and the second one is the cement production and in fact this uh, both the fossil fuel use and cement production are responsible for releasing uh, to a tune of 70 percentage, 70 percentage of carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere or due to the combustion activity and cement production. And 30 percentage is because of the land use activity, land use means it can be an agricultural activity, it can be uh, other later land use changes. So that is also responsible for releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There is only around 30 percentage. So 70 percentage is the combustion activity is because of use of fossil fuels. The point to be noted is that we need to switch over from use of fossil fuels to other renewable energy sectors. So in that way the carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere can be controlled. That is a significant point to be noted at this juncture. So when you, then when you look at the so definitely the atmosphere every year it is gaining more and more of carbon dioxide and that is responsible for increasing surface air temperature. That is uh, the point I wanted to stress here. So when you look at the, the carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gases, this particular gas carbon dioxide absorbs long wave radiation. I said it's uh, all greenhouse gases or radiatively active gases absorb the long wave radiation more than 4 micrometer and as far as the absorption band of carbon dioxide is concerned it absorbs at 2.7 micrometer, 4.3 micrometer and 15 micro. Meter. So these are the absorption bands for carbon dioxide. Okay, and when you look at the other uh, gas, that is methane. The as I told you that uh, the concentration of methane since industrial revolution has uh, you know uh, random jump. It's a wide jump in. In fact, 150 percentage increases there. 750 parts per billion to 1800 parts per billion. It is so huge, and the main reason is the agricultural activity, the rice production and livestock activity. Basically, uh, the methane emission is because of, uh, you know, uh, microorganism induced uh, activities. Basically, that is the reason why because the methane is emitted into the atmosphere, whether it's a paddy um, uh, cultivation or a livestock, because in the case of livestock, the, uh, the ruminants, particularly the ruminants that releases a lot of methane into the atmosphere. These are the two important, you know, uh, reasons rice production and livestock in, in fact 115 uh, teragram of uh, the methane is released because of these two activities the paddy production and livestock so the stress should be on this paddy production and how to reduce the methane emission from the livestock then th uh, the third important source as far as methane is concerned it is the waste management no, anaerobic de decomposition also releases methane. So the waste management strategy, particularly the landfills, they also, uh, you know, releases methane into the atmosphere. So our focus should be on these three important sectors, the agricultural sector and the waste management sector, in if you wanted to reduce the methane emission. Okay. The, as far as the, the greenhouse gases is concerned, methane, yes, it is having an absorption band at 7.7 .7 micrometer. And but you know, very important point as far as methane is concerned, it's having a very you know uh, short residence time in the atmosphere. It's a, between 9 to 15 years. It's very short, very short uh, residence time. But you know, it is you know uh, it can be removed from the atmospheric system by reacting with an hydroxyl group. 
think the methane is reacting with the idoxin group. If the concentration of idoxin group in the atmosphere decreases, what will happen? The resilience time will increase. So the concentration of idoxin group is very, very important thing. So when methane reacts with an idoxin group, it releases uh, water vapor, it releases carbon dioxide and ozone. Again, that is in the cause of concern. Why? Because Water vapor is a product of this particular reaction. Water vapor, water vapor is again uh, greenhouse gases. So again, it should be taken to account that particular point. And third important point as far as the reaction of methane with the hydroxyl group is the product is ozone. Ozone is again a greenhouse gases. So this reaction. Uh, the methane uh, reaction with the hydroxyl group has to be taken to account uh, because it's having a multiple uh, kind of effect because the, the water vapor, the ozone is also released to the atmosphere as a, a byproduct of the particular reaction. And as well as the methane, uh, the co concentration in the atmosphere is concerned, a huge, you know, uh, you know, stock of methane is there lying deep inside the permafrost region. So there is a possibility of uh, positive feedback. When I say possibility, because of increase in surface air temperature, the permafrost can melt. And because of melting of permafrost region, the methane lying deep inside, it can come out of the system. And that can in further the you know uh, concentration of methane to the atmosphere. And that can lead to a positive feedback. When I say positive feedback, the surface air temperature will further increase. So that is about the methane, uh, uh, the greenhouse gas. Next important gas is the nitrous oxide. When you talk about nitrous oxide, when it, uh, the concentration of um, uh, nitrous oxide has increased uh, from 275 parts per billion to 320 parts per billion, the increase is around 20 percentage. Uh, you know, when you look at the concentration of nitrous oxide, like your methane gas, the, the reason, main reason is the agriculture related activities because you know the nitrification action right, that's basically the microbial mediated process nitrification is a process that releases the nitrous oxide into the atmosphere so what are the reasons what are the sources of it forest clearing activity and use of uh, nitrogenous fertilizers like urea and any kind of new, uh, synthetic fertilizers we are applying to the agriculture field that also releases nitrous oxide into the atmosphere and uh, a very meager amount even the combustion activity also responsible for nitrous oxide emission to the atmosphere. So these are the sources and as far as the, the degradation of nitrous oxide is concerned it degrades in the only in the stratosphere region uh, by an activity called photolysis. Uh, that is about the degradation of uh, nitrous oxide. And the absorption band for nitrous oxide is at around 7.8 micrometer and 8.6 micrometer. So these are the three important gases. So what is the significance of this particular um, uh, gases, the source of emissions when you look at it is that when you wanted to contain, when you wanted to contain uh, the emission of uh, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide our focus should be on the sectors responsible so for the uh, for uh, instance uh, if you wanted to contain the uh, the carbon dioxide concentration into the atmosphere how you will be doing it so the focus should be on the energy sector you'll be trying to uh, switching switch over from the fossil fuel sector to the renewable energy sector in that way the emission of uh, carbon dioxide can be controlled. The second important thing is that trying to increase the resource efficiency. So the second aspect is that resource use efficiency. So whatever the thing, whatever the activities, industrial activity we are doing it, we'll try to increase the efficiency. You know, when you increase the efficiency, so that can drastically reduce the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The third important aspect as far as the carbon dioxide is concerned. So we need to have, uh, you know, uh, the consumption pattern, sustainable consumption that also can reduce uh, the emission, carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere. These are the basic things at this juncture we'll, uh, we'll, we, we can state. Later on, we can discuss about various mitigation strategies uh, pertaining to different gases. And as far as the non-carbon dioxide uh, greenhouse gases concerned, like uh, methane and uh, nitrous oxide, 
as I told you, the important activity responsible for this non-carbon dioxide gases are basically land use changes, basically agricultural activity. So agricultural activity, how you can make it, how can you transform the agricultural activity so that the greenhouse gases, particularly the methane and the nitrous oxide emission can be reduced. So there is a kind of a transformation, agriculture transformation is is required. When you talk about agriculture transformation, uh, I mean to say that whatever the industrial intensive and industrial agricultural activity we are doing it, we will try to focus on those aspects in a way that the emissions of methane and nitrous oxide can be reduced. So you will try to switch over from using the synthetic fertilizers to more of organic menus and a kind of a transformation in agricultural activity. Think about a strategy called uh, climate smart agriculture. So in that way, when you talk, switch over to uh, climate smart agriculture strategies, so uh, animal husbandry reactivity or agricultural activity, everything will be having a focus on three important aspects. One is the reduction in greenhouse gases from agricultural activity. The second important thing is that we will try to adapt the agricultural system to ch changing climate. So that is the second important objective of climate smart agriculture. Third important thing is that whatever agricultural activity the main focus is we need to achieve food security. So the climate smart agriculture because it is it's having itself uh, inbuilt you know the transformation agriculture transformation within it so definitely that can help us to reduce the methane and nitrous oxide emission from agricultural activity so this is uh, in nutshell about the ways to minimize the emission methane and nitrous oxide so in, in today's session we have discussed about the greenhouse gases emission uh, we have just focused on uh, three important gases particularly the carbon dioxide uh, methane and, and nitrous oxide and i have stated uh, the in a very comprehensive manner what are the mitigation stra strategies in coming sessions we'll be talking about the various mitigation strategies and adaptation strategies also sector wise so that's it for today's session thank you